Welcome to another In The Labs with me, Todd. When I make something, I want to make sure that I make something that I really want to use, something that tells a story, and something that I feel other people would like to make. I know my last project um, didn't quite tick off all those boxes, but I hope that this time I made up for the difference. I want also to make sure that I use some of the features of our software that I, didn't, I don't typically use, and maybe for a different purpose than what they were kind of initially intended for. The first thing is the molding toolpath, and also I'd like to create a V-carving inlay. Anyway, let's take a minute and show you what I've done. So this is what I've come up with. Um, it's a pencil box. When I was growing up, I never ever saw my dad without his journal, his mechanical pencil, and his stick eraser. It was the same one every time. He had it through his whole life, at least the part that I knew of. And I wanted to make something that was a little bit of a shout out to him and also to me because I do exactly the same thing and I enjoy that whole ritual of taking my pencil out of my bag every day and putting it on my desk. So this pencil box has got a V-carve inlay on the top and then when you open it up, place for your pencils and then also a spot to put your cell phone for charging. So the material I used was a piece of oak that I found in the labs and then also a piece of bird's eye maple that I brought with me from Canada that I wanted to repurpose from uh, a table that my uncle had. The cutters that I used were a 60 degree V-bit with a half inch shank. There was a quarter inch ball nose end mill. There was a very small 0 0.078 end mill and then also a 0.183 end mill. I highly recommend that you make some test cuts with your V-carve inlay settings. Uh, my first set of um, settings didn't work so great. Uh, the propeller uh, went away actually. I've got one half of it but not the whole thing. So I went in and I adjusted my vectors, changed some of my tooling, and this was my second uh, inlay which worked out uh, pretty darn good. So the settings that I use to make this are the same ones that I use to make the top of the box. Anyway, let's take a look at those files now. Let's start with a fresh copy of vCarve and we're going to go ahead and open up the pencilboxtakeflight.crv file. As soon as you open up, of course, you're going to be given our notes page. Be sure you read this and understand it. Um, and before you run any tooling at all that I've provided, make sure that you take into consideration your machine, the tools you have on hand, and also the material you're cutting into. Um, and also I highly suggest that you do some test cuts on your V-carving before you go ahead and cut this just to make sure everything fits together properly. Click OK. And let's take a look at our job setup here. Um, this is a double-sided job. Important to remember, uh, dimensions are 9 by 9.5 by 0.95 inches thick. That's the material I happen to have on hand that I found in the pile of wood in the labs. I'm going to zero off the uh, material top on both sides, datum set to the center, and I'm going to flip from bottom to top, and everything else should be okay. Now, this is the top view of our project and you're going to see the first thing you're probably going to notice is that the text is upside down and in my original cut that you'll see in the video it's actually flipped around the other way um, and I felt that when I opened the box up it was nicer to see it right side up than upside down um, so this will actually make it cut properly and when you put your top and bottom together or properly in the way that I originally designed it and um, you know it, it, it'll look much better and feel much better as well. So this is our top side and I'm going to take a look at the bottom side and that's the bottom. So in my particular case I decided to cut this side first and um, we're going to take a look at the tooling and that'll help us to understand better what's going on. Let's tile our view and let's look at our um, we're going to change our material. I don't know why it's at the green pine we're going to go to that instead. So let's just go ahead and take a quick look at our tool pass one at a time. So my material happened to be a little bit thick so I chose to go ahead and create a pocket tool path to make sure that I had a nice flat surface to start from and also get the material down to a size that I wanted. So I'm going to use an end mill for that. I'm going to cut down a quarter inch. It's going to take two passes based on my tool setup and we're just going to go ahead and have a look at that and 
that's pretty much all it does, which isn't all that exciting, but certainly it does get my wood down to the thickness that I needed. The next thing we're going to do is cut in the peg holes. This is a double-sided job, so I need to make sure that I cut holes for my pegs in my material and use those same peg holes but on the other side of my project and machine those into my wasteboard on the CNC. So when I flip it, everything lines up perfectly. Let's go ahead and preview that visible toolpath, and that's great. Now, these two sweep profiles, I chose, instead of using a 3D model to get the, the curve here, or this nice sort of swoopy shape, um, I decided to use the actual uh, molding toolpath. So let's have a look at one of those. This is the one for the bottom. So this is the cross section. Let's, let's maximize this for a second. This is the cross section for the bottom of the box. And it's actually being swept along this line down here using the molding tool path to create a nice shape. And the great thing about this is that I didn't need to have a 3D model and I can use the molding tool path for something different than what it was attend intended for. So I did that two times, the bottom and the top. Now, if you're wondering where I got these cross sections from that I'm, I'm running along the molding tool path, um, these are actually drawn um, off to the side and if you flip these over they actually fit together properly and if you take the total combined height of both of those when they're together they actually equal the thickness of the pencil box that I wanted and so when I actually extrude those across there using the molding tool path then I, the result is I get the two sides of the box the size that I wanted. So let's just go ahead and close that. Oh, let's take a look at this for a second. Um, both of these tool paths have the gap above and my actual um, tool path is going to be created at the bottom of my material. Uh, that's important because I already pocketed out the top bit of my board so it, it's not there anymore so I need to make sure it's pushed down. I'm going to use a, a ball nose end mill to do this with something nice and round so that it actually when it cuts the contour it looks really nice and smooth and uh, that's pretty much it. So let's just go ahead and close that and let's preview both of those tool paths and see what we get in the end. And you'll see that we get nice swooping things. Now, one thing you're going to want to remember is that this is not an actual 3D model, so I cannot project tooling onto this particular surface. That's not possible. Um, so when I was thinking about that, uh, that's going to come up a couple times. One is when I put my magnet holes in there, and then also I had to choose to put my V carving in a flat bottom recess, which is fine, and that works out perfect. So, the next thing I want to do is we are going to um, go ahead and look at my pockets for the pencils. And I chose a start depth of 0.36, that way it ends up getting down just to above the swoop and then ends up going down 0.44, um, and that will actually give me the recesses for the pencils and also for my cell phone in there as well, or my mobile phone. Um, offset tooling seemed to work fine. It gave me a nice clean bottom and everything looked great. So let's calculate, oh shoot, let's calculate that. And then we're going to go ahead and preview that. And this is what we get in the end, and that looks really great. So let's run our profile cut. Now with our profile cut, what I decided to do was to not cut all the way through my material, but put on my tabs. Um, a couple things. One is that meant I didn't have to do a tool change, one tool change, in between my pocket for my pencils and my profile. And also it meant that my wood was still nice and strong, so when I flipped it over to do the work on the other side, it was going to hold together really well. So let's preview that visible tool path. That looks really good, exactly what I wanted. It's perfect. Let's go into our V carving, which is pretty basic. We just made sure that I projected that onto the 3D model, which I really didn't have to do because I gave it a start depth. There is no 3D model there, so really that was not necessary at all um, because these are just all virtual cuts. So what uh, I did do is I used a start depth of 0.81, which ended up being at the top of the bottom of this uh, pocket, and then I could get a nice, you know, nice clean, crisp text. Now also, I added a bit to it. I think I added 0 0.01 to my start depth. That way I went in a little bit deeper and ended up making my letters a little bit more bold than what 
Um, it just would have been if I just used the uh, the surface down here, which is point you can see down here in the corner, um, point 0.8. So at point 0.81, it went down just a little bit more just to give me a nice sharp edge. So let's just go ahead and take a look at that. And that's what I have at the bottom, which looks really good. And then we're going to use the pockets for the magnets. Now I had to create two different toolpaths for that because these are at different heights. Now, luckily, just luckily, um, the magnets that I use were small enough that they didn't get in the way. If they had been much bigger, then this curve wouldn't have worked because it would have. Of course, the magnet, the surface of the magnet is not curved. Uh, what I could have done to alleviate that problem would have been to make a small post here and put my magnet in the end of the post and then made a hole here uh, for the post to go into and that would have actually made uh, a little bit more sense that way my box wouldn't slide up and down and also it would the magnets didn't need to hold as well um, and everything is fine. Now everything is fine with my particular box and magnets hold pretty decent even with having um, three pencils in there it's not so bad although you know when I do cut this again, I am going to put stronger magnets in there. So let's just take a look at those two toolpaths. Let's preview those. And that's what we're going to end up with. And they worked out really well. Now I did have to run some test tooling in another piece of material to make sure that I had the offset proper. So I added 0 0.01 to the actual size of the magnet so that when it cut they would fit in nice. and. Um, and they were easy to put in without me having to kind of hammer them into place. So that was great. Let's take a look at our second side. Now this is a great side because there's only three different tool paths. The first thing we have here is the pockets for the pegs in the table. And when we look at both sides of our project, you'll see that there they are. And if we look at this one up here, you might not be able to see it, but these aren't um, these are asymmetrical. They don't actually line up. Um, well, they line up when you flip the board over, but they aren't mirrored from front to back and or from top to bottom. So they you can tell when you put the board back down again whether or not you have it um, in the right orientation or not. So that's really kind of handy. Uh, so we ran that first. I'm not going to bother to show you that. Although I can show you that, and what that will prove to you is that they do line up because they're actually in the end they actually cut through right through the board so you can see that they actually cut right through so everything lines up properly there. This is my V carving for my plane and slipstream and right here is the part that we're going to look at this is the cutting depth for my female part um, and right now let's take a look at the cheat sheet that comes along with your project here you'll see the V-Carve Inlay Cheat Sheet that we're going to include in with your project. This hopefully will help you understand better what settings to use to get a really good tight fit on your male and female parts. So the first thing we're going to see here, and this is super important, is that your start depth or SD plus your flat, flat depth FD equals the depth of cut and it will be this case with both your male and female part and typically they should equal the same amount for each. So this is our female part, it's a cavity and we're going to make sure that our start depth is set to zero and our v-bit will come down and it will go down to the bottom to the flat depth of one and machine this all out to give us a nice female part. Now it's pretty easy. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated is we want our male part to fit inside of the, our female part but leave a bit of a cavity at the bottom and some space here at the top and the way we're going to do this and, and really what's going to happen is when you push in your male part it's going to fetch up onto the sides of this and that way you'll have these cavities here that'll help you you know retain glue in there and also give you a little bit of wiggle room to make sure your part fits just perfect. Now if we flip out this male part you'll see that we have a start depth of 0.8 and a flat depth of 0.2 and if you add those two together it equals the one the same um, depth of cut that we have for our female part so those both equal out. So let's have a look inside the software to see what those two toolpaths are going to look like. This is our female part so we're going to have a start depth of 0, a flat depth of 1. We're going to use a 60 degree v-bit which is perfect and nothing else is selected. Now on our male part it's going to be slightly different. Our start depth is 0 0.8 
our flat depth is 0.2. So if you add those two together, you're going to get 1, which is the same as the female part. And typically, you would see that the start depth is more than the flat depth, at least for the project that I made anyway. Um, the V-bit is exactly the same as the female part, and we're going to make sure that we use the flat area clearance tool. That will actually pocket out all the area around our raised male part, and then we'll go back in with our V-carving bit, and we'll actually um, put the bevel on that shape properly. Okay, that should be it. Now that we know that little bit of information, um, here we go, and... Um, 0.8 is the 0.08 is the depth we're going to use. We're going to use a 60 degree V bit, and everything else is fine. So let's just go ahead and preview that. There we have it. That's our plane. Now, in hindsight, I probably would have lobbed off the propellers on this. Uh, they did cause me a bit of trouble because they are the thinnest part on the plane. But in the end, it did work out okay. Uh, if I was going to do this again, though, I probably would remove the propeller or make it probably double that thickness, which might look a little funny. So, or at least a half again um, thicker, um, and that would probably make it a bit easier for me to do. Let's go ahead now and take a look at our pro profile cut, and we're only going down just enough so that we stop at the bottom of those tabs. Now if we maximize this and take a look at both sides of our project, you'll see that the tabs still survive. Everything looks good. And when it was all done, all I had to do was take it off the table and put it aside. I did not cut it out right away because I needed to have a flat frame to clamp onto when I glued uh, the male part into the plane. Let's have a look at the male part. And this is the plane and jet stream file. Um, again, up come your warnings. Make sure that you do look at all the tooling and choose the appropriate um, settings for your machine, the cutters you have on hand, and the material you have. And also, again, I highly recommend that you do some testing, do some test cuts, some test small inlays to make sure that you um, that everything fits fine. And what I did, I just did an inlay of just the plane um, in a couple of scrap pieces of wood, made sure it worked fine and then uh, went ahead and used those same settings inside of my project. This is a fairly easy one. It's only a one-sided project. Let's have a look at the tooling and let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, so we have four different tool paths and we have the green pine again. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to skim the material flat. Now the board that I used, as you saw earlier, is a piece that I'm going to repurpose so it wasn't completely flat and I needed to get rid of the finish that was on the board beforehand. So I thought I'd run a quick pocket tool path to do that. It's just down 0 0.02 of an inch. Uh, very basic stuff, not complicated. And off I went. And let's preview that. It ends up just flattening off the top of my board so I knew I was starting with a nice flat surface. Actually, that green, okay. Now let's have a look at our pocket tool path. So when we create a the male part of this, we are going to make sure that our cutting depths add up to the same depth that I have my female cavity, which in this case is 0.08. So I'm going to use a start depth of 0 0.06 and a flat depth of 0 0.02. And if you have to, please go ahead and refer to that cheat sheet again, and that'll ex better explain where these numbers came from. Use the same V bit. I'm going to use a end mill to clean out all this area around here before I go in with my V bit and clean everything up. I'm going to make sure that's an offset toolpath. I could use a raster if I wanted to, but I decided to go with the offset. And we went ahead and calculated that. And when I did, I got these two toolpaths. One was called V-Carve Pocket, and one is called just V-Carve. And we're going to look at these one at a time. So here is the pocket toolpath. Let's quickly just go ahead and preview that. So this is going to go around to remove all of the material around there that I don't want to machine with my V-bit. And then I'm going to go in with my V-bit and just clean up around the edges of everything. 
and make sure that it's the right shape to fit inside of my female part. Now you will notice, and I was surprised that these the flat areas here are actually wider than what you expect. And they're supposed to be wider than, than what you expect because they should fetch up on the inside of the cavity, of the female cavity that you've made um, before they bottom out. And um, that way even the end of the propeller here is flat a little bit where the bottom of the cavity in the bottom or the top of my box it comes down to a nice sharp point. So this means it'll bottom out before then. So that worked out great. And then the last thing I did was a profile. Now, and this is to cut it out. So if we view this toolpath, you'll see that it's kind of funny. I decided not to use tabs. Originally, I had to cut this three times. Originally, I had a tab at the bottom and at the bottom. But what happened was, as I was cutting out this profile cut, the tab it weakened the end. This piece of material here actually buckled, pinched my cutter, and broke the bit. So I decided this was a better way of doing it, and then when I was all done, I could just take it and hand cut the ends off here, and I would knew that everything was nice and strong. Now you'll probably notice in the video that I actually, by mistake in my excitement, cut this first um, and forgot that I needed to do everything else. That's what happens when you get excited about CNC. And um, anyway, so uh, everything did work out in the end. It wasn't a problem at all, but I just wanted to point that out. So this is my actual... Um, male part and that's it for that. Now the last thing we need to do is actually skim off the male part from the, f the female, the top of my box and to do that um, I needed to create a special file. So I created this guy here called Plain and Jet Stream Skim and this is what we call a, uh, a skim pass uh, again, make sure you read all the notes, make sure you adjust all the tooling to fit your machine that you're using and, and the actual cutters you have on hand. And this is exactly, you'll notice it's exactly the same file as the top and the bottom that we used with the exception of the material thickness is now different. Originally it was 0.95 and now it's 1.39. So once I glued the top and the bottom together, I took a new measurement of my board thickness and then I could go back and zero off the top of the male part and actually, or the back side of the male part, excuse me, and then machine all the way down to 0.95 and that would get rid of all of the extra board that wasn't glued into the cavity. And that actually turned out pretty good. And we'll preview that. It's, it, it doesn't mean much here because it just looks like a, a pocket tool path, but really it wiped away all of the um, the maple board that I put on top of the other piece or glued in the other piece and it worked out quite well. The um, the thing you might want to consider is if you get nervous about going down too deep is actually cutting this a bit shallow. So at, in my case I could have cut it at 0.42 and then it would have left a little bit of material behind and then I could have done one more tool path and actually gone back and cleaned that up or simply gone to my sander and sand it off the surface or put it through my planer or whatever I needed to do. And that is the last bit of the actual tooling that you need to create your own pencil box.
Well, there you have it. I think that this project ticks off all of my boxes. Um, first of all, it's something I'm going to use. I'm going to use for many years. It tells a bit of a story, and I think it's something that you're going to want to make. If you do want to make it, why don't you go over to your VNCO account and download the free project. Even if you're not into planes, um, this is great for all kinds of different occasions. Make it your own, and please show us what you make. If you're still having a bit of a difficulty with the V-Carve inlay stuff, um, our user forum has some really great posts that I'm sure will sort you out. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do, and we'd love to hear any comments you have. Well, until next time, be safe.